Hi folks, here's my small spark gap Tesla coil, but with a spiral primary coil. One nice thing about it is that I can tune it by changing where I connect to it on the outer turns. Something you don't often see on a mini one of these. As you can see, it gives pretty good results. Here's how it's made. First, of course I designed it using the Java TC online calculator. I start out with six turns. When I click on the Run Java TC button, I get secondary and primary resonant frequencies that are very close together. And if I turn on Auto-Tune and do it again, the frequencies are right on. Scrolling up, you can see that the calculator figured that to get that, I need 5.9241 turns, pretty close to the six turns I'd requested. Next, to do the coil. Since I'm tuning it by connecting to it somewhere along the coil, I'm using bare, uninsulated wire. And since there's high voltage involved, I want the wire to be fairly thick and round to reduce leakage to the surroundings. I'm using 16 gauge wire, which came in this roll from a local electronics store. But another source of thick wire I use a lot is to take it from household wiring, which you can find in the electrical sections of Home Depot and Lowe's, for example. That wire is usually even thicker, 14 gauge. I print out this template, which you can find on my webpage using this annotation, card, or link in the video's description. Use the one that's rotating in the opposite direction as your secondary coil, since you'll be making it upside down and then flipping it over. The distance from line to line should be 5 millimeters, or half a centimeter, so you may have to do some scaling or margin adjustments to get it to print out correctly. Put some lengths of clear tape on it, with the sticky side facing up, each one overlapping the next. Use more tape to hold it down in place. I'm using a different tape so you can see what I did. Then tape the whole thing to the table so that it won't move while working with the wire. Next, start pressing the bare wire onto the tape, following the spiral shape. Notice that I left a length at the beginning. That's for connecting to the high voltage power supply later. I stop at eight turns, just in case, even though I calculated I'd need only six or less. When it's all done, cut the wire from the spool. Then use strips of an opaque tape, one that you can see, to further hold the wire in place. Cut it free of the template and excess tape. Notice that I still leave some tape sticking out past the edges of the coil. And finally cut out the middle. Notice that when it's in place, the side with the bare wire exposed is underneath, so that you can connect to it from there. For that you need it to be fairly high up for whatever connecting method you're using. So I first check how high I want it, and how high the secondary coil should be raised so that the bottom of the secondary lines up with the primary. I cut another length of paper towel roll that's high enough to lift the secondary coil up that high, and with a slot in it for the secondary coil's wire in the back. I put it in place and add a little tape near the bottom. A quick test shows it works well. Then I cut four pieces of scrap plastic. Notice that since I used a pencil to draw the outlines on the plastic, and the graphite from the pencil is electrically conductive, I make sure to cut within the lines, so that I don't have any graphite on my pieces. I then hot glue them under the spiral coil. I also trim off this excess wire. Time to connect it up and tune it. I put in place that extra cardboard ring that I'd made, then I slip the primary spile over the secondary, and lower the secondary down in place, followed by the primary. I connect the inner side of the spiral to the high voltage from the power supply. I connect the wire with an alligator clip on one end to the spark gap. The other alligator clip goes to somewhere on the primary coil. To tune it, I get a long plastic rod. Anything plastic will do. I connect another wire with an alligator clip to one end and use a clamp to sit it on the table. I put a needle in the alligator clip. The other end of the wire just dangles loose. I move the tip of the needle near the Tesla coil's top load and turn on the power supply and turn it up. I pull the needle away until the spark is non-continuous and then move it in until it's continuous again. The first type of tuning is to get the optimum position of the spiral coil with respect to the tall secondary coil. When I'd hot glued the plastic legs to the spiral, I made sure they'd make a snug fit on the secondary, allowing me to position it at any height. So I try different positions, testing the effect on the spark length each time. I get the longest continuous sparks with the spiral raised this much with respect to the secondary. This is called the coupling, the coupling between the two coils. Going back to the calculator, you can see a recommended coupling coefficient here, and the calculated one here for if the coils line up at the bottom like I originally had them. But if I put the recommended coupling coefficient back in the calculator here, and turn on Auto-Tune and run Java TC, then the coefficients are the same. And up here, sure enough, it's told me to raise the primary spiral coil, which I did, so my tuning matches what the calculator computed. 
Next, I reposition the connection to the spiral coil. Then I play with the distance between the needle and the top load some more to see if I can get a longer continuous spark. I keep trying different positions on the coil until I get the longest continuous sparking. It's hard to tell precisely where it's best, but it's around the 5.9421 turns that the calculator had recommended. Time for some fun. I attach the needle on top to get streamers. And then out come the fluorescent lights. The ring one is my favorite. Well, thanks for watching. See my YouTube channel, Rimstar Org, for more neat videos like this. That includes one showing in detail how to make this small Tesla coil, another where I add actual ion propulsion to a Star Trek Enterprise model, and for a fun summer activity, one on making water bottle rockets and how they work. And don't forget to subscribe if you like these videos, or give a thumbs up, share with your social media, or leave a question or comment below. See you soon!